The Great Scarf of Birds by John Updike. Playing golf on Cape Ann in October, I saw something to remember. Ripe apples were caught like red fish in the nets of their branches. The maples were colored like apples, part orange and red, part green. The elms, already transparent trees, seemed swaying vases full of sky. The sky was dramatic, with great straggling V's of geese streaming south, mares' tails above them. Their trumpeting made us look up and around. The course sloped into salt marshes, and this seemed to cause the abundance of birds. As if out of the Bible or science fiction, a cloud appeared, a cloud of dots like iron fillings which a magnet underneath the paper undulates. It dartingly darkened in dots, pale, pulsed, compressed, distended, yet held an identity firm, a flock of starlings, as much one thing as a rock. One will move above the trees, the liquid and hesitant drift. Come nearer, it becomes less marvelous, more legible, and merely huge. I never saw so many birds, my friend exclaimed. We returned our eyes to the game. Later, as Lot's wife must have done, in a pause of walking, not thinking, of calling down a consequence, I lazily looked around. The rise of the fairy above us was tinted, so evenly tinted I might not have noticed, but that at the rim of the delicate shadow the starlings were thicker and outlined the flock as an ink stain in drying pronounces its edges. The gradual rise of green was vastly covered. I had thought nothing in nature could be so broad but grass. And as I watched, one bird, prompted by accident or will to lead, ceased resting and lifted, lifting in a casual billow. The flock ascended as a lady's scarf, transparent of gray, might be twitched by one corner, drawn upward, and then decided against, negligently tossed toward a chair. The southward cloud withdrew into the air. Long had it been since my heart had been lifted as it was by the lifting of that great scarf.